Grand Theft Auto Online has changed so much over the last 10 years. So today I'm going to compare all of the aspects of the game from when it launched up until now. So whether you're a new player who didn't play back in 2013, or you're someone who used to play back in 2013 but haven't played the game lately, this video will teach you a lot. So let's go. The motorbikes back in 2013 were actually a very underrated option and some of the best vehicles in the entire game. You had the option of saving up $1 million to get the Adder, which was the fastest and most expensive vehicle in the game, or you could pay $15,000 for a batty motorbike and almost have the same performance. Nowadays, Rockstar has kind of ruined motorbikes, because now in the motorbike class we have the Oppressor and the Oppressor Mark II. Yes, flying motorbikes. Not only that, but they're flying motorbikes that have rockets on them. And let's be honest, yeah, this doesn't make much sense. Cars on the other hand, like I mentioned before, the Adder back in 2013 was the most expensive vehicle in the game, $1 million, fast forwarding to today, and supercars are no longer at the top of the meta in terms of vehicles. With that said, we do have some very fast cars in the game now, and that's mainly in part due to the house special work upgrades. So now when upgrading your cars with HSW upgrades, a lot of the stats like acceleration, speed and braking now actually have an entire second bar underneath the first bar because that's just how much better they are now. There's also roughly 500 cars that you can drive in GTA Online now, which is mind boggling considering how many the game launched with. Armored vehicles have come a long way. In 2013, if you wanted something with armor, it was a tank and that was it. Nowadays though, there's so many options to protect yourself. We have armored service vehicles that can tank over 50 rockets, armored SUVs like the Night Shark or Insurgent Pickup, and even an entire new set of vehicles with Amani Tech upgrades. These allow you to put armor plating on the sides of sports cars, SUVs, and supercars. And with those upgrades, they can take anywhere between 3 to 15 RPGs. You can also add other defensive capabilities to supercars as well, like a missile lock-on jammer, so no one in the lobby can even lock onto you. Yeah, cars in GTA Online aren't just cars anymore. The aircraft meta has changed so much over the years. Looking back at 2013, most players would actually just go to the helicopter spawn points around the map and just steal a helicopter that way to get across the map. But if you're looking at a jet on the other hand, I think every single one of us, regardless of when you started playing GTA, has broken into Four Zancuno to steal a laser jet. And when the game launched, you couldn't buy a jet, so if you wanted to fly one, this was the only way to do it. Nowadays, we don't steal aircraft, we own aircraft. In fact, we can own a hangar are inside for Zancudo to store any aircraft we want. And what aircrafts do we have now? Well, if you're looking at helicopters, we have something like the Akula, which can go off the radar so that you can fly across the map completely undetected. If you want to talk about a jet, how about the new Raiju jet? Not only can it also go off the radar whenever you want, it's a VTOL, meaning it can take off vertically. Or how about an Avenger, a massive Osprey airship, your own personal flying fortress that can store a control terminal, multiple cannons, as well as a jetpack in the back. I don't think anyone would have thought we would have something like this when the game launched. When the game first launched, in order to grief players, players used two possible options. The first was jumping in the Rhino Tank. Now this was the most indestructible vehicle when the game launched. If you saw someone in a Rhino Tank, you had to drive the other way as fast as you possibly could. And then just a couple months after the game launched came another griefing option, the Zentorno. The reason the Zentorno was so good at griefing was because it was actually bulletproof from the back. And because at this time, not many players were a very high level, so they couldn't unlock things like the RPG or the grenade launcher, it was very easy to drive backwards and just shoot people or throw sticky bombs out the back and blow them up. Fast forward to now and there are just so many griefing options. Let's run through them. The Oppressor Mark II, any sort of jet, and then possibly the worst option, the Orbital Cannon. That's right, nowadays we quite literally have a space satellite cannon that can lock onto players and blow them up whenever you like. 
The mechanic has changed a lot. In 2013, you had to call the mechanic on your phone, wait for them to drive over to you and drop your vehicle off, hop out of the car and then take the vehicle from them. But over the years, people got upset that this took too long, along with the fact that the mechanic would often just drive away with your vehicle for some reason. So Rockstar had to change it. Nowadays, we have so many different ways to request vehicles. We can still call the mechanic, but the mechanic won't actually deliver it himself. It'll sort of just teleport there. And the even easier option is going into your interaction menu and requesting your vehicle that way, or requesting a service vehicle that will spawn right next to you instantly. <laughs> In 2013, the Mile High Club was not finished yet. It was still under construction. And ever since that day, players speculated that this building would one day be finished and we'd be able to own it. So let's have a look at the exact same building today. What? Oh, oh, they they still haven't finished it? Are they even working on it? What, what are the construction workers doing here? Weapons. I think whenever anyone starts in Grand Theft Auto Online, one of their first trips is down to the local ammunition. We've all gone in there, bought our very first guns, and then probably shot the guy at ammunition on the way out as well for fun. It's honestly just a tradition that every GTA Online player has to do. Nowadays, you won't see players going to ammunition much at all, because we have a lot of other options to buy weapons. Let's start off with Mark II Weapon Workshops in almost every single one of the properties we can own. In here, you can buy weapons, upgrade them to Mark II variants, and purchase different types of ammo. Or how about your own personal armory inside your agency? This is basically your own personal ammunition that lets you buy weapons, night vision goggles, outfits, body armor, whatever you like. Or if if you want something on the black market, head over to the gun van that spawns randomly on the map. Over here, you can get weapons like the railgun, Molotov cocktails, and other black market weapons at discounted prices. As if inflation wasn't bad enough in real life, it has also come to GTA. At launch, the most expensive property was $400,000, the most expensive car was only a million. Whereas nowadays, the vehicles continue to get more expensive every DLC that comes out. We have a jet that you can buy for $10 million, a CEO office that you can buy for $4 million, and that's not even mentioning Rockstar's price hike to a lot of vehicles in the middle of 2023. Among those included the Oppressor Mark II's price increase from 3.8 million all the way up to $8 million. Inflation is here and things are really expensive now. A lot of players don't realize how hard it was to make money back in 2013. There were no heists, no businesses. The best way to make money were by robbing stores, doing contact missions like Rooftop Rumble, selling cars off the street, and doing races with friends. That's right, believe it or not, Grand Theft Auto actually used to be about street level crime. Fast forward to now, not only are we business owners owning a bunch of illegal businesses, we've also also saved the world in the doomsday heists, we've robbed a casino, robbed an entire private island, helped Dr. Dre get his phone back, who would have thought that would become a thing? You can go gamble at a casino, yeah, there are so many ways to make money now, and even though things are a lot more expensive, at least we have better ways to make money too. Racing has changed a lot. If we look back at 2013, it was all street races. Not only that, but it was really, really popular to be a racer. Nowadays, the racing community in GTA is actually quite small when compared to the entire player base. Fast forward to 2023, racing has taken a very weird turn. From around 2015 through to 2021, racing changed from street racing to things like stunt races doing all of these crazy custom courses. However, with the Los Santos Tuners update, Rockstar took racing back to its roots, and nowadays some of the most popular races in the game are street races again. Not only that, but we have HSW races for house special works vehicles, open wheel races for the Formula 1 cars, and maybe, just maybe, one day soon we'll have go-kart races as well. Back in 2013, car dealerships were very, very bare. 
we had Elitis, Southern San Andreas, Legendary Motorsports, and Warstock. And even those websites were way more empty than they are currently. Legendary Motorsport were for the really fast cars and high performance cars, and Southern San Andreas was mainly full of cars you could just find off the street. Fast forward to now, we have way more dealerships. An Arena Wars dealership, Benny's Special Motorworks to upgrade rides into different variants, and also three in-game dealerships that you have to walk into. Simeon's dealership at Premium Deluxe Motorsport is now an actual dealership you can go into. Every week, there'll be five different vehicles that you can walk up to and buy. Luxury Autos has been added in Vinewood, and each week, there'll be two high-performance cars in there. And at the bottom of the map is the Vinewood would car club for Grand Theft Auto Plus members, where if you pay a subscription, you'll be able to buy specific cars at discounted prices. For six years, the casino wasn't how it is today. Up until the middle of 2019, the casino was just like a lot of the other buildings on the map. A building that you couldn't go into. Sure, it was a bit of an iconic landmark, but really there was nothing special about it at all. Today, of course, we have the Diamond Casino and Resort, and it's been that way for about four years now. You can go inside, gamble, own a penthouse, go down underneath and use the music locker, or start up the Diamond Casino heist and rob the place. And for those reasons, it's really become one of the most iconic spots on the map. The map itself used to look a lot different. Way back on PS3 and Xbox 360, the map was actually colored. And in my opinion, I like this a lot better. I think it's a bit cooler to look at. Whereas nowadays, Rockstar switched over and uses the black and white map that they have now. Want a part two? Let me know what else you'd like to see me compare in the comments down below. Until then, stay safe and I will see you in the next video. Boys. Since I was in the seventh grade, had my first kid, I was only 17. Always a provider for my parents.